Chances are, if you've worked with power supply design, you've probably come across the PM bus standard. If you're new to it, it's probably confusing and you have some questions. I'd like to walk you through some basics of troubleshooting PM bus and understanding how it works in a series of short videos. One of the first problems many engineers encounter when they're working with PM bus is communication difficulties. Either the slave device won't respond, or the data doesn't make any sense, or it's corrupted, anything of that nature. And the first thing that you want to do is take a look at those signals on the bus. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do that using a standard oscilloscope. What I have on, on the bench here is one of Maxim's multi-phase DC to DC uh, controller products on an eval kit. And this is basically a two output controller, the Max 20754. And it uh, runs up to six phases. And the phases are configurable, so you can assign some to one channel, some to the other. In this case, there are four on one channel, two on the other. But what I'm usually really going to use this kit for today is to show you how to uh, analyze and debug the PM bus signals. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply power to the PV kit, and that will bring up the, the controller itself. Once I've got the EV kit started, then I can start my GUI. And this is the Maxim Power Tool GUI, which is designed to run PM bus through our Max Power Tool 002 dongle. I'll just start that up. And the GUI will search the bus, find any devices that are on the, uh, the physical bus, and then pull up a tab for each one. In this case, there's two tabs because my two output controller appears as two slave addresses. And you can see that it's communicating. We're getting uh, Vout data and other information being updated in the GUI real time. And then the next thing to do is take a look at some of those transactions on the scope. So I have my oscilloscope set up with uh, two channels, one for the SCL signal, which is the clock, and one for SDA, which is data. And I'm basically going to connect those to the test points on the EV kit for those two signals. So channel one is SCL. I'll connect that to the clock and ground. And then channel two is SDA. So I'll connect that to the SDA test point and to ground as well. Now right now the scope is triggering on the falling edge of SDA. And the reason I've done that is because a start signal on the bus is SDA falling while well, SCL is high, and you can actually see that right here. There's a start condition. SDL went high, went low while well, SCL was high. Now, obviously, there's a lot of transactions going on right now because the GUI is pulling a lot of different commands from both addresses on this EV kit. And so right now, we can't make a lot of sense of it. But if we capture a single transaction, now we actually have something that we can look at and uh, break apart and see what's actually happening on the bus level. Because my scope has an Ethernet interface, I can open it in a browser and I can actually save a screenshot of the scope to my desktop. And then once I have that screenshot, I can open that with Paint. It really doesn't matter which tool you use, I just happen to like Paint. Everybody has it, it's easy to use. And what I'm looking for is every rising edge of the clock. I pick a straight line and using the shift key just drag in a nice fine line on each rising edge. And I'm going to go ahead and do this here and probably time lapse in the final video because this can be a little bit tedious. Now once I've got all those uh, straight lines in there what I want to do is come in with the text tool, and I'm basically going to create a text box at the bottom, and we'll make it opaque. And then what we want to do is mark the various events that happen on the bus. Obviously, the first thing that happens here is a start condition, and then it looks like we have a one and a zero, and so forth. So we basically go through and mark the state of the data line for each rising edge of the clock line. And I'm just kind of lining these up with my little vertical lines so that I can see where I'm at as I work. Now keep in mind the bus goes in um, byte units, so we have 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And this next 
uh, rising edge of the clock is going to be an ack. And then we start back again with the next section of data. So now at this point you can see I've got the entire transaction worked out. And basically it begins with a start condition, which is to say the data line went low while the clock was high. Then we have the slave address with a zero at the end, and the zero indicates that it is a write, which makes sense because we're going to write the command code to the device. And then the slave acknowledges that, and then we see the command code of one, which is actually the operation command. Then the slave enters clock stretch for a brief period, and then we see the slave act, and the master sends a repeated start. Again, data goes low while clock is high. And again, we see the 7-bit slave address, this time followed by a 1 for a read operation, and a slave act, and then the slave returns the command data for the operation command, which in this case is 0 because the device is disabled. Then the master maxes this device, which tells the slave to release the data line and allow it to send a stop condition, which follows shortly thereafter. So this is the manual way of working out a PM bus transaction on the bus. And the key thing is to just mark all the rising edges of the clock and then go in and indicate what's going on in each of those cases. The trickiest things here obviously are the start, the ACK, and then the uh, ACK repeated start, acknowledge, and then the, the NAC and stop at the end. So you really have to kind of look at whether the clock is uh, clocking data or if the clock is high and then the data line changes state. And that will help you identify those uh, the difference between a, a start-stop condition and a data bit being clocked. And if you remember too that the data always proceeds in bytes followed by an ACK or a NAC, that also can help you uh, identify what's going on because you can count out each rising edge of the clock and associate it with either a bit of data or an ACK signal at the end. Now in a lot of ways what I showed you is the hard way to do it and the reason I showed you that is because this next method requires that you have an Im embedded analysis module on your scope. But if you do have it, you can see here that my bus settings, I can set this to I squared C, and then I can define inputs. SCL input is on channel 1, SDA is on channel 2. Thresholds, we can set to basically half of the 3.3 the .3 volt or so pull up. I'm going to say no to include the read-write and address, uh, include the uh, read-write bit in the address. We're going to say no, and the reason for that is because um, generally we think of the, the slave address as being a seven-bit number, and so it's easier to see what's going on if we separate out um, the write information from the address. Now you notice that if I change that to yes, now you can see that the address is a little harder to read because it's showing you the entire eight-bit address plus read-write bit. So I really kind of prefer to say no, and then actually have it call out whether it's a read or write process. And if you want to, you can turn on bus display. You can actually show the bus and the waveforms. Or you can just show the bus, which I think is kind of nice. We'll just move that down out of the way of our actual waveforms. And you can choose hex or binary. I generally prefer hex. It, it lines up better with my way of thinking about most of the PM bus commands. So now, we're using the built-in oscilloscope analysis features to look at the PM bus transaction. And again, this is, this is very similar to what we saw when we broke it down manually on the PC. We can see that there's a write to slave address 5B, command code 01, and then the device um, acknowledges this, and then there's a repeated start, which is that green bracket, and then address read, 5B. So it's going to read from address 5B. The first was a write to send the command code. The next transaction is a read from address 5B. And the device returns the data associated with that command code, which in this case is zero for operation. So there we have a very simple way to look at actual SM bus, PM bus data on a board and figure out what's going on. And I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to go through a lot more topics in the future, but this is at least a, a starter on how to look at the bus and see if everything makes sense. Thank you very much.